Hey, it's the footy coach here. Let's cut right to the chase. This England team will win nothing with Southgate in charge. He's had three major tournaments, eight now as manager, I think. And I know these games are just friendlies, but Brazil and Belgium are both teams going through huge transitions, whilst this crop of England players are either coming to the peak or are at it already. Southgate's style just personifies why English managers win nothing. The last English manager to win a major trophy was Harry Redknapp in 2008. The last English manager to win a major European trophy was the great Sir Bobby in 1997. It's 2024. That's incredible, isn't it? The FA coaching system isn't fit for purpose. I know that. As someone who had to get away from England and learn my trade elsewhere for a better education at a lower cost. I'll make a video on that some other time. I know some people don't want to believe that this group of players England have are world class. And it's not just a small group. It's the wider squad. Players who could be called up. Here's why. These are all the trophies that youth teams have won recently. They've been cleaning up. The only teams not to win anything in the last decade are the under-21s when Southgate was in charge and the seniors with the same manager. What I believe is that Southgate is the pragmatic, old-school style manager who plays the opposition and not his game. We've seen this multiple times with him. Basically every time England come up against a big team and it has cost them. Croatia in 2018, Italy in the Euros final and France last year at the World Cup. This England team has multiple players who play for the best managers in the world in teams which impose their style on others, regardless of who it is. Arsenal, Liverpool, Man City aren't scared of each other. They all try to impose their game on their opposition, even in matches between them. We saw that in the recent Liverpool-Man City game, which was immense. When you have this pool of talent who've been playing under those managers, why not just replicate it for the national team? So, here's how England set up. It's such an old way of playing which means attacking intent is limited because you have two holding midfielders you've got four attackers and sure the fullbacks do get forward but Kyle Walker is always look, looking back over his shoulder because he's thinking which of the center halves he's going to have to cover because uh, Harry Maguire is there Phil Foden against Brazil didn't touch the ball once in the box this is Foden who's had an amazing season this England team does not need two holding midfielders. Declan Rice plays at Arsenal as a lone six. He's one of the best midfielders in the world. Here I've got Foden here but you know that's Bellingham in this England team and Foden doesn't even get into this team most of the time because Rashford's like a favourite of Southgate and he plays and Saka obviously is really good as in that right wing position but Southgate prefers the two holding midfielders and then let's just say this Bellingham of course he should be in this. Tiquidated is the right word. Bellingham plays in as a sort of 10-8 for Real Madrid but he still has a number eight alongside him and there's still one defensive midfielder right so if England want to win games they need to have two number eights who shuffle up and down the pitch. Jude Bellingham can play that role even even you know Phil Foden could play that role there's a lot of players who could play that play that role but Declan Rice can cover this defensive midfield position himself all right so we've got Chilwell and Shaw and Walker on the wings I don't think the wide players I don't think is that important because of the quality of the wide players England have Harry Kane's probably the best number nine in the world I know Haaland scores loads of goals but Harry Kane does everything not just scoring goals he's he's an amazing striker and has been for many years it's a tragedy that he hasn't won any trophies but this England side even though Jordan Pickford made a mistake I think he's a good goalkeeper he's not one of the best they've still got an amazing squad of course there are the centre-back issues with Maguire seemingly picked all the time but me I would be putting John Stones Joe Gomez Konza these are the players that should be there Konza and Gomez, they've not been picked for squads for years. Conza was Aston Villa's best centre-back, you know, for quite some time. Ahead of Tyrone Mings, who Southgate picked a lot. Chilwell and Shaw, it's just a much of muchness. It could be Kieran Trippier, to be honest there. Um, no, I'm fine with that. It all depends on how you want this back four to set up. So, for example, me personally as a coach, I would have Trent Alexander-Arnold out right back. I don't care what anyone says. He's the best right back in the world. And you no know, people would be like, oh, you can't defend. But I'm a coach who tries to impose my style of play on the other team. If Trent can't defend, it doesn't really matter because I expect my team to have most of the ball and for Trent to have the ball a lot. And he would just go in there and Declan Rice would be there. And Kyle Walker is who I would play at right center back because he can cover that space because he's quick. John Stones or Joe Gomez or whoever, they'll be fine here. You know, Luke Shaw, really good left back because 
he would still be able to be play this reserved uh, left back role you know by not going forward that often and making it a three at the back now i'm going to show you what the what the top two teams do i think um, i've got liverpool here and they sort of play like this you know like uh you know with trent coming in kanate has got amazing pace he covers out wide robertson does go forward but not so much so sometimes they've got two players at the back now imagine the balls of a team to just leave two players at the back. That's a team that know they've got the quality and the talent to keep the ball and to keep the opposition pressured on the other side of the pitch. Now, oh, these guys, McAllister, Sobosly, you know, they're, ama they're, they're amazing on the ball. They keep the ball so well. You know, the attack speaks for itself. These guys score the most goals in Europe. So, so this is one style of play which can be implemented where you have an inverted fullback. Arsenal do the same with Zinchenko. They have him coming in inverted. And Southgate, he wants to feel this closeness, right, of the midfielders to his defense because maybe he's worried about these defenders. Maybe he's worried Maguire is going to keep making mistakes. But at Liverpool, they, they change fluidly throughout the game. For example, against Manchester United in the FA Cup game, Mino and McTominay were doing amazing in pressuring Endo on the ball. So do you know what Liverpool did that turned the game? was after about 20 minutes, those players were gassed from pressuring Endo. McAllister just dropped in here and Sobosly went there. And I'm not sure if you noticed this, but as soon as McAllister dropped in, Lupo started to dominate the game. Sobosly kept finding space behind Mino and uh, McTominay. And that's something that kind of changed the game. And as the game progressed, McAllister just ended up moving further up the pitch because that little fluidity that they had in their midfield pushed the whole United team back by because they got scared of Sobosly having the extra space. England can do this, you know. Okay, maybe Rice is under pressure. Bellingham can just drop in for a few moments to pull the opposition into him and create space behind for a Foden, a Sacco or whoever to drop into that space. When we go over to Man City, it's uh, kind of a similar system to Liverpool, except it's John Stones going into midfield. So John Stones goes in there. You got, don't know why it's got Kovacic, but it'd be De Bruyne or Bernardo Silva or whoever Foden's on the right normally over here. And, uh, and Kyle Walker, again, he does get forward sometimes, but he plays that covering role over here as, as the right centre-back, right right back. And Nathan Ake does the same on the side. So they have three at the back in essence. But the reason for that extra person in midfield is what Southgate is trying to achieve anyway with his two defensive midfielders. But all you're doing is you're taking a player from the back line and pushing him further forward, which means that when you're playing against teams, what you do is you create something like this, where the play is not in your half at all. It's always just in their half. And every time they try to clear the ball, your boys win the ball back and it comes to these extra men here. And it just creates total control. England have the players who can play these roles. We know that because they play for this team and this team. So why don't England do it? Well, it's down to the manager. It's down to Southgate. And the other side of the coin, of course, is the players Southgate still picks. Maguire should not be near any England squad and neither should Henderson. They aren't good enough. They're too old. You look at players like Kwanzaa and Gomez. Ben White, who's been thrown to a scrap heap, who's having a superb season. All right, he's playing at right back for Arsenal, but he's a centre back as well. You know, they're at top four teams. Maguire isn't. Maguire doesn't even start for a team that does not have a style of play. If you want to dominate other teams, you need quick centre halves who don't have brain farts every 40 minutes. Uh, Kobe Mino was called into the squad. Look, I think the kid's a baller, he's 18, but he's still a player of moments. He goes missing for large parts of games. That's because he's 18. He's been thrown into the squad ahead of players like Ramsey, Elliot, Curtis Jones. Players who have won multiple trophies, played in Champions League and Cup Finals. You know, Rashford's been dragging his heels around the squad for years now. It was abysmal against Brazil. What, touched it three times, gave away three times. Personnel, Southgate picks. You know, they're his favourites and also, you know, media pressure and whining. And this is the same media who've been telling us he's the best thing since sliced bread. But this England team are the favourites for the Euros and they should be with the talent in this squad. Here's a side-by-side -side statistical analysis of Mainu, Elliot and Jones. Make of it what you will. I've been away for a while and I'm sorry about that but I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on Southgate and thank you for watching.